AK Fabers, Ed Piscor here. Tom Scholey. Uh, a while back on uh, my Instagram, I posted uh, some old Marvel Comics submissions that I sent uh, when I was a young teenager, um, 18 years old actually. Uh, these were assignments uh, for first year of Qbert school, right? And I posted these up, and I think the title of, of the uh, post was, um, I was a teenage Marvel reject. <laughs> In the title, I said, wisely so. And a lot of people, now a lot of people being nice, I get it. Um, but people were like, these look fine. This looks good. Like, their loss. Um, why do you say so, Ed? There's a lot wrong with these pages. And I promised in the comment section of that post that I would put together a video where, um, where I went through the pages and, like, you know, roast them. Give them a give them a critique. Uh, a lot of people have been hitting me up whenever I do my inking live streams, asking if I would um, critique their portfolios and stuff. And I'm very uncomfortable with that because I would have to have a lot of information to start with. Like, like, do you want to draw like for Marvel or DC? Mm -hmm. Because there's like a certain way that you would have to critique. A set of pages right. with that in mind mm -hmm. and uh, what happens if you're a young artist about to make a breakthrough and now you have this douchebag over here putting sl even a slight doubt in your mind it's fucked up you know I don't like that I, I, I wouldn't want to be the cause of somebody like you know having bad th thoughts in their mind or what like nobody ever put bad thoughts in my mind when I was young so like I just don't want to do that with anybody else. But the the concession that I'm happy to make is uh, we'll go through some of my old work, and maybe when uh, when we cut promos on these pages, um, it'll give you guys some food for thought whenever you're putting together like a submission package. Now, keep in mind the information that I have in the way that I would like grade this stuff is uh, primitive by today's standards. Maybe the bar is far lower or higher. Mm -hmm. when it comes to getting into Marvel DC now. I have no idea. We'll go by, like, you know, the 1999 mm -hmm. sta standards. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, man? Like, when uh, I saw the posts, too, and I was very fond of it. Like, it, it, uh, it has a lot of charm. And I don't, like, again, we're going to put it under the microscope and, like, really, you know, try workshop it the way, like, if, if this was something you were actually working on right now, we'd, we'd, you know, try to figure out how to make it the best it can be. But I liked it, and, and it's it's ahead of like where I was at age 18, like, like, and, and I, and it works and you know. Cool. So without further ado, we're going to cut promos on these pages, give you guys a close up look and we'll just roast them, tear them, tear them to shreds and uh, talk storytelling along the way, talk drawing along the way, talk what it means to be a penciler. I'm ready to do my worst if you are. Sure am. So Tom, this is a five page sequence. Okay. That uh, was an assignment at the Qbert School, and the way the uh, it was for the sequential storytelling uh, class at the beginning of the school year, it was the only class that would um, you would do actual comic pages because the other classes you would build up to that, learning other skill sets and stuff. But sequential art, you can imagine comics. This is towards the end of the first year, and the idea it was you get the opportunity to draw a five page fight sequence. That's generally the uh, boilerplate submission guidelines for Marvel or DC when Marvel and DC had submission guidelines and mm -hmm. you can uh, uh, you know send stuff to them unsolicited right. before you know douchebags fucking ruin that <laughs> <laughs> I opted for Daredevil versus Bullseye uh, Frank, Frank Miller was in my mind Frank Miller was in my thoughts I probably reread the Daredevil series for like you know the hundredth time at that point so whenever we would uh, whenever we would finish a uh, a piece and bring it into class, you know, that next week or whatever, what we would do is tack up the assignment up on the board and one by one, the entire class would go through everybody's, everybody's work and tear it to shreds, give each other food for thought on where we should put our energies for the next assignment. And one of the most important parts of the critique was for an independent third party to go through the narrative and describe what they are reading. The person who made the page was not allowed to do so. These comics are meant to be read by others. So uh, if you want, if you would like, do me that solid. Read through our little tale here. 
with as much uh, detail as you wish. Okay, so the um, this uh, uh, subway train is hurtling through a tunnel. Bullseye climbs out of the window on this panel, and Daredevil follows him. And Bullseye's got a little bit of a head start, and he's he's running. Uh, and then, but uh, Daredevil's catching up with him. Okay, so now it's you know it's come outside, and and maybe even in in this first panel here, it, you know the color would specify that it's 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 not necessarily a, a train that's underground at the moment. It's it's like you know emerged into like you know the outside, and now it's uh, you know going through you know like a wooded area, and, and uh, Daredevil's chasing uh, 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 Bullseye across across the uh, tops of the of the subway, and then. Um, Daredevil, you know, takes this moment to throw his billy club, hits uh, Bullseye in the back of the head, and now, you know, the big hero shot. He's got he's got Bullseye at his mercy, or so he thinks. <laughs> Bullseye gets up and look, he's loosening a nut on the um, on the top of the train, and he knows he's got he's he's got a surprise. Daredevil's not ready for. He flings it at him, and uh, Daredevil. Uh, blocks it but barely you could tell it was a surprise and uh you know that but that was bullseye's big shot and it didn't work so now uh daredevil's just kind of you know smacking the shit out of him and and breaks his club on his head and now like uh now like like i'm almost having uh having uh you know sympathy for bullseye because he's just he's getting real really messed up but he's still smiling he's still he's like you know you got any more uh, you know is that the best you can do and and daredevil's kind of shocked because like he smashed his billy club like he gave this guy the beating of a lifetime and he's he's still going uh and, and he's got uh, you know reserves of strength uh that that are that are only now being tapped uh and he's uh you know co- coming at uh daredevil uh, twisting his, his his head or whatever uh uh, you know, throttling his, lifting his neck up and and uh, pushing him over the side of the uh, subway train. And Daredevil's kind of trying to hang on. He grabs uh, a little bar, and both of them go tumbling off. And now Daredevil's holding, you know, his enemy. He's the lifeline for for Bullseye. And then you know he lets go, and and maybe the dialogue would let us know whether that was intentional or an accident or. Uh, and then you know, big big splash. He's he's falling out of out of you know. This is a big fall. He's falling out of the panel. Okay. So in terms of storytelling flow, you you got what I was trying to communicate. Yeah, and there were some subtleties in there that definitely came across. So like that, you know, that kind of stuff. Like uh, sometimes these things can be like really um, generic or or not well thought out. You know, vague. And so like there was specificity here. You know, that that, that I thought was good. You're too kind, Thomas. <laughs> Let's roast this thing. Uh, that's something. That's something I promised all the all the people on Instagram whenever I said that these pages were no good. So, I'm not afraid to get to particulars here. Off the bat, um, let me just make note that yes, the, like the anatomy, like it's a given. It's not there. There's a lot yeah. of uh, growing up that little Eddie P needs to do, mm-hmm. and. Uh, you know, you read certain critics these days. Uh, they'll still they'll tell you that Eddie P still needs a lot of uh, figure drawing work, man. And and I don't uh, actually disagree. I don't think that uh, that kind of education should should ever be finished. Right. So yeah, this the first the first panel. I mean, I there's there's enough specificity in this uh, train design that makes me think like you weren't just totally winging it. Like you, like you had some kind of reference, but it still it still does feel like kind of made up. Like it feel it feels so. I don't know if that's just the, the execution or, or if it really was just like a made up shape but it's like um you know these uh, like one of the things is like areas of transition and the transitions just seem like very harsh very abrupt what does transition mean like where you're going from uh a, a thing you know that's that's coming this way to to this point where it like bends that oh, way yeah, yeah, you know yeah, as opposed yeah, yeah. to just like two shapes smacking in now there is a lot of charm here, and this reminds me. What's what's the? Is it traveling? Is that the name of the? the uh, it's a Japanese comics artist. I think I think maybe Picture Box published them here or something. But it was like it was called Traveling or something, where it's just like these like geometric uh, people in these geometric like uh, call you know like trains and stuff traveling through this geometric landscape and like arriving at their destination. And this reminds me of that. <laughs> and so there's a, there's a charm there, but again, it's like yeah, we're trying to get into Marvel and DC. Marvel and DC aren't looking to publish the same people that Picture Box would have published. You know, this would have been a submission to become a penciler ten years before 
I drew this. I think I drew this in uh, the year 2000. Ten years before that is when Marvel made the transition from uh, from inkers who really finished the pencil illustration to like tracers, mm-hmm. the guys who. So so the demand put upon pencilers uh, at that period when the inkers weren't really finishing the drawings. The pencils had to become very tight, yeah. I guess is what I'm trying to say. If you were to deliver such dull pencil lines to an inker, like at this state, with some of these like finicky bullshit textures, mm-hmm. um, what would be coming back is probably probably not going to make you happy. Yeah. You know, but basically this boy needed to sharpen his pencils a lot more. Mm-hmm. Uh, once again, of course, the anatomy is garbage here. And uh, some of the light source is dubious, of course, but just in terms of technique, like the pencil should not have been this dull because Mm -hmm. little Ed is trying to communicate tight um, feathering. Right. And you can't trust that uh, an inker is going to see it the way you want it to be, like communicate Mm -hmm. your thoughts as exact as possible because you never know if you're going to get a schmuck ink in your stuff. Yeah, like I'm, I'm thinking like in terms of like storytelling and stuff. Like, I, 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 it would be nice to have a little more information about what's going on in here before, you, like, like just even a face of like an innocent bystander with like a, you know, some something to, to, to just like he's coming out of the void. Like, like that, like that would have added a lot to it. I agree. Even to this day, like you see this window here, mm-hmm. you see the void there. Um, there's stuff inside there, yeah. and you're kind of cheating right. when you don't draw the stuff that's inside there. You know, you and I, we just shot shot a video about uh, uh, Katsuhiro Otomo's Fireball manga, and when he would draw these establishing shots with the characters walking around, um, in the background you'd see skyscrapers, and if you looked inside the window of the skyscrapers, you saw office buildings with cubicles and light fixtures and all sorts of uh, matter. Um, I agree, there should be a lot more... Uh, information communicating, even setting, because mm-hmm. like there's opportunity here for that. There's opportunity here for that. Um, it confused you. Uh, if the reader is confused, they are right. You cannot take it personally. You can't be a punk. And uh, th- this negative space and the negative space back here would have given you the opportunity. Uh, you know, it would have given me the opportunity to sell you on locale. Um, the very first volume of uh, Akira from Dark Horse came out around this time and it was something I was super obsessed with. That's that's this abuse of uh, speed lines and shit that you see here. Anything else before we yeah, go I mean, to the next? Well, like, like I, I think like, you know, when you're young, you kind of take that idea of establishing shot maybe like a little too literally where it's like, it's like you, like you don't want just that's a lot of real estate to use and not have any character. Like in, in animation, it's like they don't want, like Batman... Uh, Batman the Animated Series, he, you know, jumps out of the frame. They don't want to have a shot where it's just the background. Like, you want to cut before he's fully jumped out of the frame, you know? That's it. And you want to, you know, start it where he's already starting to jump in. You don't want, like, so that's, you know, you should at least have, like, maybe the guy climbing out of the window in this panel and then, you know, get get to the to the next beat. That, that's a very fair point, man. And, and I bet you, like, little Ed was, like, just trying, just jerking off at the idea mm-hmm. of, like, Trying to draw a really cool that, looking train. That's an accomplishment. Like when you're 18, it's like you'd be so proud of yourself after, and you just need that like super critical, self critical eye to be like, okay, this I I I worked like hours on this. It's not there yet. I gotta go back to the drawing board. Yep. But yeah, just and I, I just like the the anatomy just to get specific yeah. about it. Like it's just um you know it's like asymmetrical. Like like you know and um you know the head is too big, uh and then the way the muscles go together, it's like obvious like. You were studying yeah. anatomy. You knew anatomy, but you hadn't quite uh, like absorbed it into your style yet. So it's it's like you know like like you got to just like keep practicing, keep practicing, keep practicing until it's not something you have to really think about that much. It's it's just there, and that's what all this shit is, mm-hmm. man. All this uh, hair braid kind of musculature and all that. I feel like you have to do this kind of stuff before you get good. Like if, like you you got you got to you got to try to make the anatomy even when it's not working. Like it would be easier to just like. Ignore, make that smooth, make that an empty area and just pretend it's not there, but then you'll never learn. You could tell Eddie P, like even to this day, man, like these are supposed to be trees. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you could tell he, I was not uh, interested in drawing backgrounds or trees. And even to this day, it's like, how do you communicate a good tree, like all the leaves and stuff? 
uh, yeah, with, yeah, with, with pencil and, and furthermore with, with ink. Mm -hmm. How do you do it, man? Yeah, um, like, I just wonder, like, were you intending this to be sort of like a change of pace? Like, like this is uh, Daredevil and and uh, Bullseye out of their natural element and going into the suburbs, or they're in, they're you know they're in, you know like uh, like is this supposed to be New York? Is this like Rumble in the Bronx where there's like these mountains in the Bronx? You know, it's it's uh, it's funny you mention it because like basically every page that I draw, like I still can remember like the stuff I was thinking and what happened the day I drew almost every page I've ever drawn mm -hmm. and. Very specifically with this thing, the way that I worked out the perspective, if I was to draw city, like buildings mm -hmm. and stuff, it would have fucked, it would have looked really shitty. The way I had the uh, vanishing points uh, yeah. designated, it was no good. So um, I, I called an audible and I just went for this nonsense, mm -hmm. man. And you could tell that like the perspective is still real whack because like, now, this is, shit is kind of fun. This stuff is kind of cool. And yeah. that's that Rob Liefeld right, the Rob Liefeld that, border, that he would yeah. do. But um, these are supposed to be like... The idea is that the camera is there on the train, so it's the background that's moving. And this is supposed to be the mountains moving. But they should have been far lower. Like, like these shapes are like way too close. And then there's more of that hair braid... Uh, musculature mm -hmm. that like in our in our life drawing classes um the the teacher really wanted us to figure out like the names of like all of the main muscles and junk like that so it's like it was in my head like what's this what's that yeah the uh you know the structural integrity on this on this billy club is 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 you know like it, it just it doesn't match you know no right up, yeah, the cylinders <laughs> and the, you know could it could have done well to have a circle template or some such mm -hmm. And, uh, and like the, these, these, uh, fists are like, kind of like there was a fist on, on uh, bullseye in the previous panel where it's just kind of like a meatball, you know, it's like, <laughs> like, even if your fist is it, like in silhouette, it's like even more important to kind of figure out the shape of it. The, all, each of these little silhouette fists is Eddie telling you that he can't draw a fist at that angle. <laughs> <laughs> Going by one of the important, fr uh, Todd McFarlane tenets, when in doubt, black it out. Mm-hmm. And you could see the heavy use of black uh, throughout. Yeah, this is like the strongest panel so far. Like the the impact. Like you were going for it here, and and it, and it still doesn't it, work. Like well, no, this, it, it does. This guy's yeah, perspective right. is no good compared yeah. to that. Um, but it's comic books too, so so there's there is room for for faking. And then there's like some stuff missing on this arm. Like there, you know, there's like a sort of like a middle section of arm. That's not, <laughs> you know, like, yeah, man. Like it's I'm trying. Uh, <laughs> foreshortening but uh i'm just yeah. making stubs you know it's funny because i'm thinking about because a, a lot of the the shortcomings here are things that to one degree or another like 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 I, I struggle with you know to this day like some of these things and the way i work around it now is i have um like i can i can draw something with funky proportions and then i could just skew it and mess around with it like digitally and then redraw you know and it's it's like that that wasn't available back so you would just have to like get out your eraser and start from scratch or take another piece of you know and, and try to work it out <laughs> what do you say next one yeah next one this is a bad page <clears throat> this is a bad you're one. you're running out of steam by this point absolutely uh you have every opportunity first off these poses like this character cannot support his, himself this character, like, this doesn't work. Like, there's the weight is all off. It's ridiculous. Um, and, of course, the anatomy is all shit. That is ridiculous. The, yeah, the it's not even recognizable. Of, yeah, as, yeah, yeah. Like, big ankles. Like, I swear to God, this is the way I drew when I was 12. Uh, perfect opportunity to establish some setting um, that was just, you know, completely lost. Uh, we could talk about um, just tangents and, and shit like that. Like, like this isn't necessarily like a tangent in as much as like an image that's bleeding into another, though it kind of is. Like when you have this continuing shape and then this shape on mm -hmm. this arm, like that's that's not a good thing to do. But you should never cut an arm off like outside of a panel this way. You should figure some other way to like bring that bring that in there somewhere. Um, but this is definitely little Ed cheating, trying to, trying to get away with something. Mm -hmm. Um bad face i think i might have if i, I was gonna say that, 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 yeah, that works yeah you know what i did okay i remember this um i in wizard magazine uh there was the new helix line and uh and uh, taught, uh tim truman did a did a strip a, a story called uh, black lamb and in an interview he was talking about how he would pencil on the back of uh sure. 
a, a piece of paper and then he would light box and flip it mm -hmm. and, and fix all of his mistakes and stuff. And so it's like I drew this face, but I just kept all the mistakes. Like, okay, because <laughs> I was wondering if this one came after, like, because this this looks like it's getting better. Like, like you're figuring <laughs> things out here. So I guess a real example of um of overdoing it, like mm -hmm. like uh, you know, like an SAT question maybe. Like sometimes your first uh, answer is is, is the right mm -hmm. one or some shit. And I remember this is a highly controversial sequence, man. Does this work for you? Or does it not? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it. You know what? I have to say it does like even like, yeah, there's, I see what you mean about like some confusion here and there, but it's still, it reads as he's tossing it this way. And then it also reads as bouncing off of there. Like, like th to me, that's an interesting solution. And this is the kind of thing that like only happens in an artist's early work and is kind of treasured where it's like, like you would never even like, like it's kind of innovative and clever. It doesn't quite work, but like you would never do that now, you know? You notice that and kind, it's kind of, of a shame. Yeah. <laughs> you notice that kind of stuff in like student films too, mm -hmm. where there might be like one hint of something interesting, but it's amongst all sorts of other uh, pretense. When you look at like Ditko's early, early work, you see a lot of that stuff because he eventually solidified into like a bag of tricks and things that are like very polished, very good. But there'd be like these quirky, like we like weird for Ditko things that he do that, and then you just never see them again. I think a better solution would have been to just make the nut maybe slightly smaller and move it, move it up here more so that you had some more trajectory off of the sure, billy club yeah. to, to kind of sell, yeah. sell that no, idea. No, totally. Yeah, yeah. You could make, make that, that thing work. Of course, the anatomy, once again, shit. The idea was, um, you know, Frank Miller was good at choreo totally, choreographing. Yeah. It feels so it's like, I, yeah, I yeah. have to do like a little Miller, uh, Miller piece, man. But then, uh, the idea was because, you know, you're submitting this to Marvel ostensibly and, this might be out of character for a daredevil. Yeah, it, I mean, it depends on, like, what happened prior to this. Yeah. You know, like, what, what are the stakes of this battle? Because he is, like, yeah, this is, like, uh, brutality. And, and, and you know, you think about the Miller daredevil where it's, like, he's, like, rescuing uh, Bullseye, you know. Right. And this is also bullshit um, because the nut, like, the nuts would never, like, the screw part would never be outward. Mm -hmm. Um it, he would have pulled the bolt out that way. So it's like you have to... It was Alex Toth who would talk about, like, when you really, like, reference something and you, and you study, like, a real train a real train car or something, it's an education because yeah. you're, you're finding all of that information out. Like, you don't have to just um, verbatim, like, almost trace a train. It's like, okay, the rivets go downward, you yeah, know? Yeah, you have to make it work inside your head before you can draw it. All of these open panels, I think, mm -hmm. I think uh, it was because, not making ex excuses for myself, but I think it was because it was a assignment that was due within one week, mm -hmm. and we had ten classes with big uh, assignments in each, man, sure, so yeah. it's like you have to, like, what, what the Kubert School generally will do, like, they're trying to create, like, drawing robots, you know, mm -hmm. so that you, you, so that you're highly employable, um, ultimately what that can mean is, uh, you know, you're a hack, like, mm -hmm. you know, you're trained to be a hack in a way where you, you get, you, it's about getting the job done on time, not so much, um, making it look, uh, super beautiful. Like, so it's like you do the most you can with the time that you have available. But once again, not making excuses for myself. This, I mean, this, this, this face, it works like, like this, this is, you know, one of the strongest things we've seen so far is that, is that face, um, you know, the, the anatomy, uh, you know, move this stuff, you know. That pencil's over. getting real dull again. <laughs> and it just and it just looks uh, sloppy. Like, an editor would just, like, look at that and think that it's sloppy, I, I think. Head's too big on, on bullseye. You know, the shapes of the... the uh, I guess, like, not, what I'm not sure what this shape is. Is that, like, bullseye's elbow or something? <laughs> From his other hand? Th this right here? Or, yeah. That's supposed to be that, like, really big muscle on oh, the Oh, like, a, okay, yeah. And then that's, like, the wrap around the... Uh, the the front yeah and then that's Daredevil. yeah color 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 would probably like solve that you yeah know? but you should get the th you should get things done right mm -hmm. as early as possible this whole this whole panel is like super wasted opportunity because you could have had chosen a way more dynamic way to sure. to sell this yeah because they're just kind of like uh, uh, silhouette wise they're just kind of mushing into each other where you could have like a little air between them and yeah and then, then let's see what these legs are doing yeah. I, I probably was still like uh very early in my leg uh mm -hmm. anatomy stage man where i'm just like ah we'll, we'll we'll hide that for now this is cool like you, you, you you're you're still like these 
little handle shapes like you're you know you're figuring it out they don't go the, and then the you know the perspective that like the the proportions like these the doors and windows are just kind of massive compared to them but <laughs> right. the, I, like even miller would would make those those kind of kind of things you know the Mil- hand. miller would but here's the thing that the kayfabers must realize Miller's already in comics. Right. You're trying to get a job. Yeah. So you, you gotta wanna, bring your best. Yeah, yeah. You wanna you want to make your pages as bulletproof as possible, so you, in your early effort, you cannot have these ill proportions compared to to the figures, man. So once you get your foot in the door, you'll you'll I mean, go to the comic shop, pick something up off the racks. You're gonna see some whack shit out there, man, with like a bunch of complacent mm-hmm. knuckleheads who are making comics. You know what I'm saying? Is that what you want to be when you right. grow up? Yeah, and it, it's like an interesting thing because when editors are looking at these things, they're thinking, like, they tell you, like, you know, t- t- take, like, what would be, like, a normal amount of time. Like, don't spend, like, a year working on one page. But they still come in with that assumption, like, okay, this this guy might have spent, like, all summer working on these pages that he's showing me now, and this is the best you can do? Like, maybe you did do this pretending you were un- under some kind of realistic deadline crunch, but the editor's going to assume that that this 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 is you putting giving it your all, and if this is your all, then forget yeah, about it. it ain't about much. Very sloppy. Like, look at these people in the train car. Let me just pull that closer <laughs> to the cab. Look at these guys. It's like Fisher Price characters, man. Once again, still at that very um, early stage of cartooning, where you just want to draw the fun stuff. This one looks like Echo Homo. <laughs> What's that? That's that um that like jesus face that that like woman like repainted and, and made into like a chimp yeah i don't know that <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty fair like when you see it, you're like oh yeah that <laughs> crack up but that is that like big amateurish thing where it's like if you're going to put the pencil on the page like you better be communicating something man and if you're leaving this up to an inker you better get along well with that inker or else they're going to make you look real stupid. Yeah, that was like my initial thought just looking at these pages when you first showed them to me. It's like, okay, this is somebody who's accustomed to inking himself. Yeah. And like, this thing's going to get so much better once you start applying ink to it. I was thinking about inking these pages and like trying to make them work. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, my- even that, well, just looking at this, like, I want to, I want to get my hands dirty with like, like I, I, it's hard to resist that impulse of like, oh, okay, move this over here, do that, like, <laughs> get, get a piece of tracing paper or something and, you know. The most embarrassing thing to me about this whole page is the fact that this is, these are the wrong hands. The mm-hmm. hands that the hand like the hand that's holding uh-huh. is not it's yeah. not the right hand. I mean that's that's another thing happens all the time. You know, <laughs> like all the time, and like you know Kirby does it. Like you know, it, I don't know. I I have my own arguments about like you know like comic book reality versus you know like a, like reality. Once again, just uh, in an effort as a enterprising young new cartoonist you can't be making that mistake man yeah. because they're looking to tear you apart you just don't want to give this kind of ammunition to somebody who's who's a, in a position to roast you they will do so mm-hmm. yeah this is like you then ran out of shot. time like you ran out of time the, the, you know <laughs> the plan was always for sure to to uh have like this like the idea of him like falling yeah. out of the page it's, it's Kurtzman type shit yeah it's it's clever but you could still like there's room to do like you, other stuff and also like Okay, let's have you know Daredevil a little more prominent in there. You know, like uh, this is also background. another example of like uh, when you guys hear me talk about tangents because a lot of people in mm-hmm. the in the Instagram would be like, "Well, what, what's that?" And a tangent are like these overlapping lines. Like you never want to have yeah, like, his hand is touching the arm. tip of his foot, so yeah. it's like a little it's Ant Man yeah <laughs> holding on to onto a bullseye's foot. It almost sounded like you had an M syllable in your mouth when you, when you, when you were about to describe that little character. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, this would be the jagged Rob Liefeld, Todd McFarlane yeah, Sharpie so, panels. Yeah, yeah I'm like, like I, I'm thinking of like your influences when you're making this, and like the spare backgrounds and stuff. Like they're consistent with, you know, like the, like the the sort of image aesthetic, you know. Yeah. So this is the stuff that we were talking about. Like, and, and once again, perspective is off. The perspective is off here compared to there. Um, I think what I was probably doing was rolling out the perspective on the paper at this size. Mm-hmm. And in order to get a more realistic feel to the perspective, that would require you to have maybe a yardstick. Yeah. In order You'd to have to go way off. Yeah. To, and what I started to do, um, even 
this same year was work really small, 11 by 7, I mean, on, like, typing paper, so that I could uh, just put, like, the vanishing points out, out, out at about here, and then when you uh, increase the size of that uh, paper uh, to, to a pencil on the, on, the, on the big sheets, proportionally it would push the vanishing points out, like, mm. way, way further... But were you trying to sneak like a little penis? In uh, no, that? I don't think so. You, you, that, you thumb see very, that thumb is very penis like. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I didn't. But I bet if we go through, like, let me just uh, look at a page or two. And that's something that we could talk about that, that comes up a lot in, in, uh, in early people's drawings. So let me see if I have any examples um, in this sequence. So what, what I was going to mention is like very often I, I see um, people who have um, overlapping foreground and background characters. And they'll put a hand over top of a background character's crotch. Not, you know, it's that forest for the trees Mm -hmm. thing where it's like, okay, I'm drawing this cool character in the foreground. I'm drawing this cool character in the background. But they're not making, they're not paying attention to the fact that it looks like the foreground character is like grabbing the background character by the crotch. Not much of an opportunity to, to do that here, I guess. But, you know, if this hand, if this hand here was coming out a little bit more, like it would have been a bad thing. You know, I'm gonna, not that it's a good thing, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm going to break uh, kayfabe for a moment, but like as we're doing this, we're sort of looking at a monitor of what we're looking at, and so we're sort of simultaneously seeing these full size and uh, like small and, and like a sh- shrunken size, and that's like really helpful for spotting, uh, you know, uh, uh, problems problem areas to, to see it simultaneously at two different sizes. Absolutely. Uh, once again, to break kayfabe. Whenever we finish a page of comics it, nowadays, whenever when you you finish a GoBots page, when I finish an X Men page, we'll we'll shoot those off to one another. Pause. You get to see your work at a thumbnail size. You get to see it at like the next biggest size whenever you click the thumbnail, and it's like not quite full size screen or whatever. And looking at your work uh, in many different sizes, at many different scales, is very helpful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like like back in the day, like the the advice would be like, look at your 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 page in the mirror, look at it upside down, like anything to just like get yourself out. And so and the size thing is like totally, you know, just we're doing that automatically. Did you ever send submissions to Marvel when you were a kid? I uh, I wish I did. I wish when I was eighteen, I I would have sent something, you know, something like this to, to Marvel. I um like I just. Was too. I couldn't have imagined it. I'm like, I'm. I'm not good enough. Like, I. Like, I. I. I felt like I need to, you know, get perfect and then sub, submit something. Like, I. Like, I wish I would have, uh, you know, thought to do, just, just, just to kind of break yourself in a little bit. You know. Do you have any examples of some of your early work, man? Some of the things that you would have submitted, or how about this? Do you even? You were one of the. You were uh, a Zurich grant recipient. Um, do you have any of that work? Yeah. Like, I mean, like how did I, that work. Like when I never sent a thing like this, like when I was trying to break in, I never sent a thing like that cold. What I, I made the decision of like, okay, I'm not going to draw like Batman or, or, or whatever. And then send that. I'm going to just make my comics, my characters do my thing and then send those. So I would, I would, you know, make my little, uh, like myth of eight opus, uh, uh, zines. And then I'd send, I'd send that to like you know Mike Carlin or or uh, uh, I this think... is this is fully formed. Let me ask you, how old were you? Uh, at this point, I'm in college, so I was probably uh, you know like you know early twenties doing this. Uh, pass that big and one. This is yeah. This is uh, Codex Pop. This is like this this is early even earlier than this. Uh, and yeah, this is like where I like recolored uh, some pages and stuff. But this was a uh, that thing I you know collaborated with 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 some some other people like we would, it was like an anthology or whatever so this is uh, Randy Costanza uh, a friend of mine he he did his bit and then and then this is where my stuff begins and it's you know Kirby esque superhero stuff super raw super rough I had a long way to go um, but like this I'd send them this stuff like I would send them one of these like printed up zines and then I'd maybe include some like you know, photocopies or whatever of like what I was working on next. So here's like a rough in progress version, you know, of, of the next thing, you know, so, you know, um, I see this as being a very valuable thing, uh, to do when submitting because 
they're seeing rigorous work, like fully formed work, and then you're sending this along too. So it's like you're getting pages under your belt, and mm -hmm. that can't be a bad thing. Yeah. Um, you sending this kind of package to an editor, I could see you getting a, a personalized response as opposed to the boilerplate rejection letter because they're seeing that you have some dedication. Yeah, I, and I, I did. I, I never got the the boilerplate rejection. It would, they'd always mention Kirby. They'd be like, oh, yeah, I see the Kirby influence. And, you, know, you know, so like it was always obvious in the letter that that they did at least you know take the time out to 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 you know you know address it directly. And uh, this is the stuff you sent to the Zurich grant to the Zurich Foundation. Peter, yeah. Peter Laird's uh, self publishing. Yeah, I, exactly. Grant. Like I, I, I think I probably sent all of them. And then this, this was this zine that I made is the comic of like, okay, here's what I want to make the Zurich, you know, like a full sized you know, full production comic of this. So yeah, that was part of the part of the submission. This this specific part. And we established that happened in about 1999. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I won in 99, so I might have sent it 98 or something. What did you print out with uh, the Zurich, man? Do you have some I, examples here? Um, I printed out the, the Myth of Eight Opus. I don't have a copy of Myth of Eight Opus number one with because I'm not rich. I can't afford, uh, you know, <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Listen, I hear you, man. Like, like I uh, would very much rather, like, have actual readers have my book than, than keep uh, one for, for myself. Like, I have several examples of... Uh, comics that I've done where it's like I don't even have a copy of it anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're out in the world doing doing what they were meant to do. Actually, uh, these these couple yeah, that you uh, have... Uh, yeah, I, I found those when I was looking <laughs> looking for, through some stuff and I thought I'd bring them along just in case. Yeah. <laughs> these, these are some mini comics I did before I really established myself and I don't even have copies of these. I'm going to have to I'm going to have to read it. Uh, uh -huh. but, they're pretty awesome. Yeah, they're, it's we, good uh, stuff. When we clock out... Oh, shit. Yeah, there's this the, is another early picture. one. I do I do uh, still have this. Like These are the comics that I sent Harvey P. Carr. Like, Harvey Picar gave me my first gigs, and these are the comics that I sent Harvey Picar. Look at this. It's a dude pooping off a roof. <laughs> it's ridiculous, man. That was, my, that was an actual friend of mine. We had him live in an abandoned building that we had access to. But, um, you know, I sent this story, and then I sent this other one to uh, Harvey, and... Uh, he got in touch. Here's the here's the uh, punchline. I used to like when we were little kids. We got a hold of condoms, <laughs> and uh, everybody's like trying to put on their condoms. And uh, when it was my turn, I asked if you put your nutsack in the condom too. <laughs> <laughs> we were we were young boys, man. We were like in like third grade, fourth grade, something like that. But then uh, here's a strip about um, like I was still at mom's crib. You know what I'm saying, man? Mm -hmm. I was like 20 years old and got a call. Uh, when I was sleeping, my dad comes up and is like, hey, some guy named uh, Harvey uh, such and such is uh, called. And I'm like, what? Harvey Picar? And I, and I wasn't uh, convinced it was him to that, start. And that's a common... I've heard that from a lot of people where it's like they get their break and then the famous person calls and it's like, yeah, it's one of my friends just doing an imitation. <laughs> uh, I wish I had a date on that, man. But thanks for bringing these oh, over. Oh, yeah, sure. So you got uh, newsprint. Yeah, newsprint and... Uh, and able to print it instead of, you know, printing up like, you know, a dozen or a couple dozen, uh, uh, I, you know, printed up like, you know, thousands of these. How many thousands would you say? Uh, Three? I think like, I think it was like 5,000. Yeah. Yeah. I think 5,000 copies of each one. You still sitting on a lot of these bitches? Uh, yeah, I got a couple. I got a couple. That's the other thing too, man. Like you talk to like, like Harvey, for instance, he would use his, um, he would use his like American Splendor ones that he had in the basement as like, uh as like a, for barter on, on the road, man. Okay, like he, yeah. he would, he would sell them to comic shops for on the road for a, for gas money whenever they would be taking trips and shit mm -hmm. like that, man. Uh, every cartoonist still has like a whole library of like a lot of their published work. Yeah. I, I, there was an ad for my uh, geo cities website. <laughs> That'll put a timestamp on yeah. this, on this some bitch. Yeah, there it is. Geo, geo city, uh, RIP geo cities. Oh, but see, man, you must've paid a little extra cause you don't have no till day <laughs> right. fucking extra bullshit. You must've paid something for that. What I like, it's like she only lit. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Yo, you're lit. This, this is, uh, it's like a real fucking comic, man. Yeah. If, if like the newsprint, like, man, like I love newsprint. Like like I haven't had a thing on newsprint in forever. Like I don't I don't know that they they do that. In, like like they do like fake newsprint now. But like like to me that feels like okay I'm in comics now. My my you know 
which also dates it too, because like you know you don't think of comics as a newsprint thing anymore, but to me like that was the, that was the thing. Yeah, that was like one of my things, man. When I hooked up with Marvel for my X Men, I'm like, you guys cannot print my thing on coated paper, and I don't want self covers where mm-hmm. it's the cover is the same stock as the interior paper. It's like you're going to destroy my whole illusion, man. If I don't have like some matte, you know, some uh, some uh, gloss free paper. You bring anything else crazy, man, or should we uh, wrap this up? Yeah, I think we can wrap it up. All right, man, we'll wrap it up, man. Not too bad of a flogging, I guess. You be the judge. But the one thing that I do know is that uh, it's a competi- like if you're trying to work for the big two, as they say, it's a competitive field, and uh, there, are, there are a finite amount of opportunities. So you want to try to make your work as bulletproof as possible. One way to do that is to have friends to talk with about, like show off uh, your work to one another, and get uh, solid, real, uh, constructive criticism. Yeah, it's like it, it's important, like finding like people you trust, because like you you could get a lot of bad info where where it like burnishes off the 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 interesting you know things about like your your individual ap- approach. So yeah, it's like you got you got to trust the people, and then just be willing to like hold nothing back, because it's like not personal at all. It's all about. This thing we're looking at right now, how do we make this the best possible version of what it is? It's all in the spirit of getting better, and you have to be able to uh, be hard on yourself and uh, realize that the people who are roasting your work, even if you post some stuff online, if they're roasting it, they're not talking about you personally. There's a lot of bad uh, reviews for any Piscor comics out there, and it's all good. They're not, uh, they, don't, nobody, they don't know me. There are like 20 people in this world who know me. <laughs> <laughs> One other thing to, to, to sort of keep in mind, too, is um, you send this work off, you got to just not be afraid to hear the word no. It's, it's going to come up. The one thing you could keep in your pocket is the fact that you only need one editor to say yes. And I think about that, um, you know, we were talking uh, Todd McFarlane yeah. um, in, in an earlier episode. When you guys were doing that episode, I was, I was like, oh, man, I wish I would have known about it. I wish I would have read that art. I wish I would have been, you know, reading Wizard back then when I was 18 because I definitely, like, I didn't realize it was that hard Un- until, you know, I, w- I was in it a couple of years and like, oh, this is really hard. Yeah. The, you, you, have, you have raw talent and that will get you far, but the stuff that puts it over the edge and helps you establish and build a real career is tenacity. Mm-hmm. You got to keep getting up. Yeah, probably the most important part. Like I would, I would say more important than talent or anything is just that that ability to just keep at it, keep at it. And, and and yeah, like like tenacity is the perfect word for it because it's like you're gonna take a beating, you're gonna get you're gonna get knocked down a bunch of times, but if you, if you just keep getting up, like yeah. you're you're gonna do okay. Yeah, it's not personal. Work hard, make comics. I'm Ed Piscor. I'm Tom Scholey. We're gonna go do just that. Sayonara.